Around the vicinity of the small town called Chester's Mill, an invisible glass-like dome suddenly falls and traps the residents within. The dome has effectively cut all lines of communication and transportation from the town, thereby limiting the food supply, electricity, and manpower of the town. Also, the dome's drop causes a great but brief rumbling of the earth, garnering the attention of the townspeople right away. A man named Barbie is just visiting the town to collect the debt from a certain Peter Shumway. However, he accidentally kills him during a fight and buries him. As such, he is about to leave the town empty-handed when the dome suddenly appears, slicing a cow in half. He then saves a kid named Joe from imminent death after they both see a plane crashing into the dome. To further prevent more incidents from happening, they both manage to stop an incoming fire truck from driving toward the dome. Since they cannot hear nor talk to the people from the other side, Barbie writes to the firefighters that they should contact the government immediately. The town's sheriff, duke, and a policewoman named Linda immediately head to where the plane crashed. The town's councilman, Big Jim, also goes to the same location. The local journalist and Peter Shumway's wife, Julia, arrive as well to snoop in about the details of the crash. Earlier, she was just investigating the presence of numerous trucks delivering propane into the town when the dome suddenly fell. However, she is denied information and her car is borrowed by the police because there are also other cases of crashes that they have to attend to. Here, Julia and Barbie meet and talk with each other, discussing their unfortunate entrapment within the dome. But unknown to Julia, Barbie had accidentally killed her husband earlier. As they talk and walk near the edges of the dome, they see a woman whose arm is sliced off. They quickly take the woman back to the hospital. Meanwhile, Big Jim heads immediately to the only available radio station in the town. The radio station, manned by radio DJ Phil and radio engineer Doty, still has a functioning radio signal because they have a backup generator. Big Jim uses the radio to announce to the people heading in and out of town to stay where they are or stop by the side of the road they are driving. A family of three, consisting of two mothers named Alice and Carolyn and their daughter Nori, hears this but decides to ignore it because they are not citizens of the town. However, just as they are about to approach the dome, a truck from the outside smashes into the barrier, instantly breaking the vehicle. As such, the family pulls over to look at the dome. Here, Nori suddenly collapses and convulses while unconsciously and cryptically telling them that the pink stars are falling in lines. For this reason, they head to the local hospital to treat their daughter's sudden seizure. At the hospital, Barbie meets a young woman named Angie who works as a volunteer at the hospital. She is also Joe's sister. Angie talks with him to pass the time. However, Angie's lover and son of Big Jim Jr. sees this friendly display from his car and mistakes it as a romantic affair between the two. Being a delusional and unstable young man, Jr. decides to follow Barbie. That night, Duke and Big Jim discuss the dome incident. Big Jim proposes that they should form a police force with volunteers due to the limited number of policemen left as some of them were outside the dome when it fell. Duke refuses this because it will just be disastrous to give power to citizens. As such, Big Jim threatens him that he will expose the truth about the propane tanks. It turns out that Big Jim and the town's reverend Lester are actually the ones stockpiling propane. Duke knows this but decides to let it be to keep the town safe and free from bankruptcy. That same night, Junior catches up with Barbie and attempts to threaten him. However, Julia arrives, preventing Junior's plan to assault Barbie. After Junior leaves, Julia asks Barbie if he has a place to stay. Learning that Barbie has nowhere else to go but his car, Julia offers her house in the meantime. Inside the house, Barbie learns that Julia is actually Peter's wife, a revelation that he did not anticipate. Meanwhile, Joe attends a party conducted on the bridge near the dome's edge. There, he meets a classmate of his named Ben. Together, they examine the dome while discussing the possibility that it may have a power source of sorts. All of a sudden, Joe collapses and has a seizure similar to Nori's. He also says the same phrase that the pink stars are falling in lines. Afterward, Joe wakes up at his house without recollection of the seizure. Together with Ben, they continue their examination of the dome to see if they can find an opening. Simultaneously, Joe's sister Angie gets kidnapped by Junior. Junior brings Angie to an underground shelter near his house, locking her there, claiming that Angie has been acting strange due to the dome. At the same time, Duke announces to the people the total number of casualties during the dome incident earlier, but he tells them not to lose hope and that he is always available to help them. Afterward, he and Linda head to the edge of the dome to discuss something important. Duke treats Linda as a daughter he never had, so he is about to reveal and entrust an important secret to her about the town. However, Duke touches the dome, causing his pacemaker to unexpectedly explode right off of his chest. He dies instantly. 
Linda immediately asks for help from her fellow policemen, but it is already too late. One of the policemen, Paul, asks who is in charge now, but Linda just tells him to do his job as a policeman. As Paul leaves, Linda and another policeman, Fred, carry Duke's lifeless body back to the morgue. Afterward, she delivers the devastating news to Big Jim who immediately visits Duke's body. He offers his condolences to the grieving Linda. The owner of the morgue, Reverend Lester, also offers his condolences, although he is noticeably dazed. After Linda leaves, Big Jim admonishes Lester because he is using their stocks of illegal substances. However, both of them are somewhat relieved that Duke failed to reveal their illicit operation of accumulating propane and illegal substances. Still, Big Jim is worried that Linda might discover the secret. Because of this, he discreetly heads to Duke's office at the police station to search for files that might incriminate him and Lester. But Linda catches him rummaging there. Fortunately for Big Jim, he manages to think quickly by telling her that he is searching for Duke's last will. He then gives the significant file to Linda, who discovers that she is inheriting Duke's house and properties, causing her to tear up. After hugging Linda, Big Jim returns to his car and tells Lester to head to Duke's house. He thinks that Duke is hiding the file there about the propane, so he wants Lester to destroy the file. Meanwhile, Barbie wakes up from a nightmare. The dream is a recollection of his earlier encounter with Peter in a remote cabin, which resulted in the man's death. Barbie remembers that he has a dog tag that might have been left behind at the cabin. The following day, a frustrated Julia repeatedly throws a ball toward the dome to gather the attention of the soldiers outside, but she is ignored. However, Julia sees that one of the soldiers is calling through a walkie-talkie. She figures that they can perhaps hijack the call and hear what is being said. As such, she heads immediately to the radio station where she finds that both Phil and Dodie were already listening to faint radio calls between soldiers outside. After hearing that the military is referring to the barrier surrounding the town as a dome, Julia quickly broadcasts the information to the town's radio. Also, Julia learns that the dome is not the government's fault because they are communicating to each other that it is of unknown origin and composition. With only three remaining police personnel left to protect and maintain order in the town, Linda reassures them that everything is under control and that they will overcome their challenging situation. But the policeman Paul, who is slightly getting unhinged, does not believe this. Still, he follows Linda's order to patrol the town. Upon Paul's exit, Lester shows up and checks on Linda's well-being. However, this concern is all a show because he secretly snatches the key to Dute's house out of Linda's hole without her knowing. Meanwhile, Joe and Ben see a group of soldiers from the outside spraying a water hose into the dome, which appears as a futile task. However, upon touching the glass dome, Joe notices that the water passed through because his hand gets wet. This means that water can come through the dome. Concurrently, Barbie returns to the cabin where he found and accidentally killed Peter in a scuffle. After searching for some time, he finally sees his dog tag as well as the gun used to kill Peter. All of a sudden, Junior emerges. The delusional young man had just talked with Angie earlier about Barbie, with Angie deciding to mock his delusions by saying that she and Barbie indeed had an affair even though it wasn't true. For this reason, Junior chained one of Angie's legs and decided to follow Barbie to beat him up. Upon discovering Barbie in the cabin, Junior notes that this must be the place where Barbie and Angie had conducted their love affair. Of course, Barbie is confused by this delusional claim but Junior insists that this is true. As such, he attacks Barbie but he is quickly overpowered. Barbie used to be a former soldier so he quickly defeats the delusional young man, bashing his face in the process. Afterward, he leaves Junior behind, warning him that he will do more damage to him if he continues to attack or stalk him. Meanwhile, Lester heads to Duke's house to search for the file about the propane. Upon rummaging through Duke's office, he sees the file pasted behind a cabinet drawer. The Reverend laughs giddily as he proceeds to burn the file, throwing it to the trash bin nearby. However, the fire immediately spreads to the curtains. Lester tries to put it out using a coat but the fire also sticks to the coat. In just a span of a few minutes, the fire has already engulfed the house. The dark smoke from Duke's burning house can be seen from miles away, prompting everyone to head to the house, including Big Jim, Barbie, and Julia. Linda also speedily heads to the house upon learning that it is Duke's house. Julia tells Barbie that they have to act fast in extinguishing the fire because Chester's mill has not received rain for a long time. This means that everything is dry and easily flammable. Also, they have no firefighters because all of them are outside the dome. Due to the urgency of the situation, the townspeople band together to deliver water to the house by using garden hoses and a nearby inflatable pool full of water. But their efforts are not enough as the fire slowly crawls into the nearby fences and grass. 
they need to destroy the main source of fire which is Duke's house. As this happens, Linda hears Lester's voice from inside the house. For this reason, she heroically saves him from imminent death. Later on, Big Jim has the idea of borrowing a tractor and driving into the burning house. Using the tractor, he manages to bring down the house, thereby stopping the further spread of fire. After the disastrous fire has been managed, Big Jim admonishes Lester for his blunder. Linda walks in on their conversation and asks the Reverend about his business inside Duke's house. Lester manages to convince the policewoman with a weak excuse. Due to her heroic rescue of the Reverend, the townspeople applaud and cheer for Linda's efforts. Big Jim also finds this opportunity to make a rousing speech that praises the townspeople for their collective effort to save the town. However, Paul the policeman is not convinced by this speech because he thinks that they are all doomed anyway. He pulls out a gun and threatens everyone and then shoots the dome, causing the bullet to ricochet and unintentionally hit Fred in the heart. In an instant, Fred dies from his fatal wound. That night, the townspeople gather in front of the police station to sneer at Paul's murder. Big Jim takes matters at hand by telling the people to calm down and pray instead for Fred's soul. Afterward, Linda imprisons Paul. There Paul apologizes to her, telling her that the dome made him crazy. He then starts to choke on something, causing Linda to open the gate of the prison cell to help him. However, this is all just a ploy for Paul to attack and disarm Linda. After taking her gun and keys, Paul locks Linda in the cell room. Meanwhile, Joe watches the video of Fred's death on his phone. Here, Nori arrives and talks with Joe about charging her phone, clearly interested in him. Since Joe has a generator at his house, he accepts. The following day, Big Jim reprimands Junior for not being present during the fire at Duke's house. He thinks that his son is weak. When he sees Junior's facial bruises and asks where they came from, Junior tells him that he got the bruises from a man named Barbie. After the lecture from his father, Junior disgruntledly heads to the underground bunker to give food to Angie. But Angie, who has been secretly listening to the radio earlier, refuses to turn around for him. Eventually, Angie turns around when she realizes that no one else had tried to escape the dome via the tunnels in the abandoned cement factory. Because of this, she urges him to check if the tunnels provide an escape, convincing him by saying that this can save their relationship. As such, Junior heads to the abandoned cement factory immediately. Meanwhile, Julia and Barbie talk with each other about random things. One of the topics is how Julia came to the small town despite wanting to be a big-time journalist. Afterward, they head to the radio station where they see DG Phil. Upon seeing him, Barbie immediately excuses himself and leaves, catching Julia's curiosity. Later on, she sees Junior walking outside the radio station. She asks him where he is going but the delusional young man tells her to mind her own business. This behavior rouses Julia's curiosity, prompting her to discreetly follow Junior to the abandoned cement factory. While this is happening, Big Jim heads to the police station to check on Linda but he finds her locked in the prison cell instead. After freeing her, Linda quickly prepares her things to arrest Paul. Doubting Linda's capabilities, Big Jim insists that they should organize a search party first, but Linda does not want to waste time any further, knowing that a dangerous man is on the loose. Before leaving, she tells him that Paul might be in the nearby woods because he used to hunt there all the time. Meanwhile, Carolyn is worried sick because her daughter Nori still has not arrived home since the fire incident. When she tries to inquire about Nori's whereabouts to two old men, they mock her instead for being a lesbian. Here, Big Jim enters the establishment and tells the people there that policeman Paul is on the loose, so he wants some able-bodied men to assist in tracking him. The two old men volunteer immediately. Big Jim then sees Barbie who is eating nearby. Since he is a new face, Big Jim welcomes him to the town. After learning that Barbie is the one who assaulted his son, Big Jim asks for his help and Barbie accepts. Afterward, the four of them head to the nearby woods to track Paul down. Paul has military training which Barbie instantly recognizes. As such, he immediately tells them that the trail Paul left behind is fake and that he is headed in a different direction. Big Jim is impressed by this. At the same time, Linda also arrives at the woods with only a pistol as her weapon. Later on, the search party has finally seen Paul, but because Paul has military training, he easily injures one of the old men before escaping again. For this reason, Big Jim tells the two old men to retreat while he and Barbie handle the situation. As they walk through the forest, Big Jim tells Barbie about his nickname which he gained during his football days. All of a sudden, Paul emerges and threatens to kill Big Jim, but Linda arrives just in time to eliminate Paul from behind. Meanwhile, Junior descends into the tunnels of the abandoned cement factory, with Julia secretly trailing from behind. For a brief moment, Junior sees hope that there is a way out 
but this is immediately interrupted by the presence of the dome. Upon coming in contact with the dome's edge, Junior's flashlight goes haywire. Not wanting him to approach the flashlight that is about to explode, Julia tells him to stop as the flashlight gets destroyed. Because of this, Junior learns that Julia has been following him. Julia tells him that she is just curious if he had found a way out of the dome. Junior apologizes for not finding a way out, prompting him to turn around and repeatedly bash the dome in frustration. After he is done with letting out his anger, his feelings change to fear because he thinks that they are trapped in the dark and maze-like tunnels. Not wanting to give up, Julia encourages him that there is still a way out so she lights a matchstick. According to her, all they need to do is to follow where the fire is pointing because that means there is a flow of wind that leads to the exit. And so, they begin to move. In the middle of their walk in the darkness, Junior pities himself for screwing up. However, Julia motivates him by saying that she is a screw-up as well because she was supposed to be somewhere fulfilling her dream to be a well-known journalist. Later, Junior tells her that all of these bad things started happening when Barbie arrived in the town. There, Junior reveals that his bruises were from Barbie's assault earlier, although he flips the narrative by saying that Barbie is the crazy one who attacked him out of the blue. After this revelation, they finally see the exit door and escape the abandoned cement factory. Meanwhile, Joe is talking to Nori when Ben and some girls arrive at his house. It turns out that Ben has told practically everyone that Joe owns a generator. Because of this, a party is underway. Later on, a bully named Carter arrives at the party. He immediately hogs the sockets by telling people to pay up if they want to charge their phones. Joe is about to approach Carter when Nori walks to the bully and tells him to move away from the sockets. Insulted, Carter attempts to harass Nori but Joe comes to her rescue, telling Carter to get out of the house. At this point, the sockets short circuit and the generator dies off, putting a stop to the party. As people leave the house, Carter warns Joe that this is not over. That night, Big Jim, Barbie and Linda walk back to the morgue to deliver Paul's body. After doing so, Big Jim praises Linda for a job well done. He also apologizes for doubting her capabilities earlier, assigning her as the new sheriff and giving her the badge to make it official. Big Jim and Barbie then walk to the councilman's house where Big Jim offers to drink alcohol with him. At the same time, Junior and Julia arrive as well via car. As Junior walks inside the house, he gives an intense stare toward Barbie. Here, Barbie excuses himself, telling Big Jim that they will have to postpone their drinking session. Inside the house, the father and son talk about their day. Junior confronts his father, asking him why he is with Barbie, but Big Jim tells his son that it is none of his business. To further mock his son, he gives him a glass of milk as if to show that he is still a child. After this conversation with his father, Junior goes back to the underground bunker with a first aid kit and informs Angie that there is no escape route at the abandoned cement factory. Seeing the wounds on Junior's knuckles due to pounding the barrier earlier, Angie treats them despite her animosity toward him. That same night, Carolyn finally finds Nori in Joe's house. She quickly tells Nori to go home. Since she is interested in Joe, Nori touches his hand as she leaves. However, upon touching his hand, the two of them suddenly collapse and convulse at the same time, identically saying that the pink stars are falling in lines. Meanwhile, at Julia's house, she confronts Barbie about the real reason why he is in town, but Barbie continues his lie, although Julia is not convinced by this. And so, as Barbie heads to the showers, Julia sneakily checks Barbie's bag and sees a map of Chester's mill with a marked location. The following day, Barbie notices that Julia seems to be hiding something, while she tells him that she is just experiencing a headache. Julia claims that she will head to the radio station, but instead of heading there, she secretly goes to the marked location on Barbie's map. It leads to a trailer park where she sees her husband's car. Upon looking closely at the car, a man tells her that the car belongs to DG Phil. Just then, Phil comes out from one of the trailers. Julia quickly asks him why he has Peter's car, and Phil answers that her husband sold it to him. However, Phil suddenly collapses. Meanwhile, the townspeople are gathered at the edge of the dome to protest because they see that the soldiers outside are already leaving them. The townspeople do not want them to leave, considering that they still do not know what the dome is and where it came from. On her first day as the new sheriff, Linda soon arrives to restore order to the unruly crowd, but she fails. As such, she takes out her pistol, scaring the townspeople. Lester also shows up to deliver his apocalyptic messages to the crowd, telling them that they are doomed. Here, Big Jim arrives to alleviate the fear of the crowd by telling them to trust him. After the crowd disperses, Big Jim criticizes Linda for pulling out a gun at the people, thereby escalating the commotion. Meanwhile, 
Angie is trying to cut the chain off of her leg with a scissor from the first aid kit. She stops and hides the scissors when she hears Junior entering the underground bunker. Junior brings a black dress for Angie, creepily reminding her that this is the same dress she wore during their prom together. He wants her to wear it. Here, Angie finds the opportunity to stab Junior so she asks him to turn around. Just as she is about to stab him, Junior manages to turn around and take hold of the scissors. Even though it slices his palm, Junior overpowers Angie. For this reason, he moves the chain to the bottom of the bed to make it harder for Angie to move and escape. He also lashes out at her for pretending to care about him. Due to his wound, Junior heads to the hospital to get treated. While Junior is away, Angie tries to scream on the pipelines at the top of her lungs, hoping that somebody will hear her. However, due to holding onto the pipeline, it breaks off and Angie falls to the floor. As she lies there unconscious, the water from the broken pipeline begins to spill slowly. Later on, people are beginning to pile up at the hospital because all of them are weakened by an unknown sickness. Worse, the hospital is lacking doctors because all of them are outside the dome. One of the doctors that are supposed to be at the hospital is Julia's husband, Peter, who is missing. Fortunately, one of Nori's parents, Alice, is there because Nori and Joe were both taken to the hospital for their seizures. Alice is a psychiatrist with experience in hospital work. As such, she can substitute as a doctor and quickly gets to work. Joe sees Junior and asks if he saw his sister Angie. Junior lies to him, saying that he saw her but that it was days ago. Much later, Big Jim also arrives and sees the drastic situation at the hospital. He also sees his son and asks about the wound, while Junior tells him that it is from an axe incident. Seeing that he is still capable of moving, Big Jim tells Junior to help Barbie in transferring some essential tools. Having no choice, Junior does so. Here, Julia confronts Barbie about knowing Phil because this means that he is not just some random stranger in town, showing her the marked map that she had taken from him. But instead of answering her inquiries, Barbie ignores her. All of a sudden, Julia's headache from earlier becomes worse to the point of fatigue. Although he is concerned about her, Barbie finds this opportunity to get away from her. As the situation worsens due to the rising number of sick people which includes Sheriff Linda, Alice's attention needs to be undivided. She believes that the epidemic is caused by meningitis. Also, the number of antibiotics to combat the disease is dwindling. For this reason, Big Jim and Barbie head out to gather medicine from the local pharmacy. Big Jim assigns Junior to guard the door, telling him that he should not let anyone out under any circumstance. And so, armed with a shotgun, the unstable Junior guards the door. With Barbie away, Julia tries to interrogate Phil about what he knows, but Phil is hallucinating due to the disease. During this time, Linda meets her former third grade teacher and she talks with her about the past. Slowly, Linda and her teacher become sicker than ever. With only one antibiotic left, the teacher wants Linda to have it because she thinks her former student's life is more important than her own. Later on, Linda wakes up feeling okay while her teacher is still struggling with the disease. After knowing that Linda is okay, the teacher then succumbs to her sickness and dies. Meanwhile, Julia asks Junior to let her out of the hospital because she thinks that her husband is in danger and that it is related to Barbie. Here, Junior reveals that he saw Barbie in a cabin. Despite this, he cannot let Julia out per his father's order. Because of this, Julia has no choice but to go to another exit. Since the exit requires a key card, she takes her husband's card and uses it to open the door. She quickly heads to the cabin where she sees the disheveled furniture inside. After searching for a while for clue about her husband, Julia finally sees a letter that indicates their bankruptcy. It turns out that Peter has no choice but to sell his car to Phil because he is broke. Here, Julia's sickness takes hold of her, causing her to collapse in her fatigue. She then hallucinates, seeing her husband at the cabin's door. Meanwhile, Big Jim and Barbie learn that the pharmacy has already been raided. With no antibiotics left in the raid, the two search for the thief. However, Big Jim already has someone in mind, Reverend Lester. Sure enough, they arrive at the morgue and see Lester burning some medicine. When they ask him why he is doing it, Lester tells them that he is just fulfilling God's plan of punishing them all. Having no choice, the two aggressively push Lester off to retrieve his loot. At the same time, the crowd inside the hospital is becoming unruly as they all want to go outside. Junior tells them to stay put, but they would not listen to him, prompting him to fire at the ceiling. At this moment, a weakened Linda appears to calm Junior down. Surprisingly, Junior delivers a speech, telling the people that he is doing this to protect them all because he is one of them. For this reason, he drops the gun at the door as a sign of trust that they will not head outside. The speech works as no one wants to go outside anymore. During this time, Nori and Joe continue to talk with each other about their seizures. Nori thinks that she caused the seizures to trigger when she held his hand. 
so they try again, but this time they will take a video of it. Initially, nothing happens, but they soon have a seizure again. After convulsing together, they watch the video and learn about the phrase that they have been saying. The video catches Joe ominously shushing at the camera as if to warn them. A while later, Big Jim and Barbie finally bring back the antibiotics. Barbie heads straight to Phil to ask what he had told Julia earlier. However, Phil cannot remember much due to the sickness. Barbie continues his search for Julia so he asks Junior about her whereabouts. When Junior tells him that he mentioned the cabin to her, Barbie asks for the keys to his truck. At first, Junior refuses, but he eventually accepts because Barbie tells him that Julia is sick and in need of antibiotics. He quickly heads to the cabin and rescues the sick Julia. After taking her back to the hospital for treatment, Julia later wakes up and asks Barbie about his connection to her husband. Barbie reveals that he is an enforcer for a bookie who makes sure people pay up to their debts. However, he does not reveal that Peter is already dead, telling her that her husband might have just skipped town. Still, Julia feels betrayed. For this reason, she tells Barbie to remove all of his belongings from her house and leave. Meanwhile, both Big Jim and Linda praise Junior for successfully controlling the crowd earlier. As such, Big Jim comments that Junior can have a career in law enforcement. Afterward, Junior takes the still weakened Linda to the police station. Impressed earlier by Junior's handling of the situation, Linda decides to make the young man her deputy. Concurrently, Big Jim goes back home where he meets Lester. The Reverend attempts to pay Big Jim so that he cannot be involved anymore in their shady dealings, but Big Jim refuses this offer. Later, as he drinks alcohol inside his house, Big Jim hears a faint scream from the pipelines. He goes down to the underground bunker which is slowly getting flooded. Upon opening the door, he sees the shivering Angie chained to the bed. 